Hello everyone, welcome back to another card combo show with me, Chokabilly, and this week we're returning back to normal. It's Opus 21, uh, after the <laughs> last week's tangent into Opus 4. So this week I am going to be looking at Galoof from Opus 21. And it seems the theme of Opus 21 was how can we play forwards onto the field for free? So Galoof, 4 CP, 8K Earth forward with the text, the forwards of cost 2 or less you control, gain plus 2,000 power. And then when Galoof enters a field, reveal the top 5 cards of your deck. Play 1 forward of cost 2 or less among them onto the field and return the other cards to the bottom of the deck in any order. And then Blade of Dawn S, which is an S and Dole, 2 is on forward, deal at 8K damage. Respectable S, but nah, probably never going to get used because really people playing Galoof to be able to do free play forwards of 2 onto the field and then making them big and there's loads and loads you can do with this card i'll go over it now Golbers. yeah so i haven't actually built this deck yet but it is coming down the line and yeah just being able to play like four two costs onto the field through gold bears and then potentially one off of gloof as well is fantastic obviously gloof doesn't care about the element of the forwards entering gold bears kind of does but there just have to be four different elements that's it uh i'm not gonna make this into a gold bears video which it very easily could become but i'm just gonna go over a few interesting choices that you could go for for gold bears with gloof on the field as well so obviously when Golbez dies, put them field into the break zone. You may search up to four forwards cost two each of a different element and play them onto the field. Their auto abilities will not trigger. Now, bear in mind when it says each of a different element, they cannot share any elements is what that means. So if you choose two multi-element forwards and both have fire, for example, one of them can't enter. So, well, technically I don't think either would enter. But um, either way, you have to make sure that they have four elements that are not shared between any of them. And obviously being an Earth, you well poised to be able to kill your Golbez because there's just a stupid amount of cards to be able to do so. So, first up, Maria would be a funny card to pull off of the Golbez because obviously you've got Galoof uh, buffing all your 2 costs by 2k and then Maria will be buffing all your 2 costs by 2k. Now, a lot of the cards I'm going to talk about with Golbez are also just generally standalone good cards for Galoof to bring in, so, you know, bear that in mind. Uh, but yeah, Maria obviously buffs all 2, two costs by 2 and not including herself, but then Galoof will as well. So, you got a standard 5k 2 cost that isn't Maria, that's now a 9k. Maria herself will be a 7k because of Galoof. Uh, now, bear in mind, if Maria's entering through Golbez, you won't get the entry effect, so you won't get to make it back up a forward, which is actually kind of a blessing in disguise because when you do inevitably get board wiped, you'll lose that backup as well, which sucks. So yeah, just consider Maria just a standard 2k um, buffer. And the good thing about this is as well, is that Maria's buff will be online as soon as she enters because it's not an entry effect, it's just a static passive. Aerith, another good choice for off of Golbez. So now you will have all of your two costs are buffed by two by Galoof, two by Maria, and two by Aerith. So Aerith herself will be a 9k because of Maria and Galoof. Galoof will be a 10k because of Aerith, and Maria will be a 9k because of Galoof and Aerith. So, you know, it's a nice little uh, three-way party. Threesome? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, but yeah, actually these cards if you're running lots of two costs onto the field Having Maria and Aerith ain't a bad shout because even though they're generally quite small now, they're not Luso, yeah, this is obvious this is gonna coming down the line But Luso for each forward other than Luso you control he gains plus a thousand power And then if there are three or more different elements among the forwards you control He gains first to brave and then when he attacks if there are five more different elements among the forwards you control Luso deals one point in damage So just with Galoof, Maria, Aerith and Luso on the field You gain plus three off of Luso's effect and then plus six off of all the other uh, forwards. And this isn't including the fact that you'll actually get a fourth forward off of um, Golbez as well. So actually he'll be plus four off of his own effect and then plus six off of um, the buffers. So he'll be plus 10K, which even if he's only first strike and brave, a 15K first strike brave forward ain't too shabby. One problem is that it is kind of easy to dismantle. And that's the big thing here. The big um, caveat is that your opponent plays an Ixion your field's dead. So make sure to run some sort of protection. But yeah, either way, making sure that Luso is huge when he attacks is quite funny. And then finally, Charlotte is a nice different option. Now, obviously, this doesn't play into Luso's last effect where if you have different elements, then you can do the thing. Um, these are just four different element forwards that I quite like and I think are good choices for um, a goal burst play because you've got Maria and Aerith obviously buffing everything. You've got Luso, who's now also huge. And Charlotte is a nice um, lightning rod. And all of these guys have static effects that you don't really care about the entry effect. So Maria's actually the only one with an entry effect here. Um, but Charlotte acts as a really nice lightning rod. So if your opponent wanted to kill Luso, for example, they have to get rid of Charlotte first. And you've got Aerith, Maria, 
and Galoof all buffing buffing Luso as well. So, yeah. And not to mention the fact that Charlotte herself will be plus 2k from Aerith, plus 2k from Maria, plus 2k from Galoof, and if it damage 3, plus 2k from herself. So, she is going to be really hard to get rid of if it's going through damage. Um, but like I said, Anixion can just completely wipe your board here. So, bear that in mind. Anyway, a nice um, alternative for this might be Caius. So, obviously, Caius can um, be both um, fire and uh, ice, and you're not sharing any other elements with anything else. So, it means that you ultimately um can play him onto the field and not worry about any of the other forwards and then you've got gilgamesh so for each card named gilgamesh in your break zone gilgamesh gains plus a thousand power if you've got ten thousand or if he's got ten thousand power or more he gains brave and can attack twice in the same turn so with galoof maria and Aerith, gilgamesh is already just a 10k you don't need to worry about the forward in the break zone or any gilgamesh in the break zone uh, the one sad thing is that he doesn't gain haste, unfortunately, so you do need to have to hang about a turn, which probably isn't going to happen with that many forwards. Uh, and also a nice mention here is the fact that Caius's entry effect won't trigger, which might sound like a bad thing, but when you read that Caius enters field to discard your hand, that's actually pretty trash. So yeah, bearing in mind that you do not want that to happen, so probably only play Caius off of the Gilgamesh, uh, off of the Gobbers, sorry. Um, but yeah, Caius is also just a standard 9k2 CP forward. So with Galoof, Maria, or Aerith, or just e just one of those, he's already really, really big. So yeah, these guys plus Gilgamesh or Gaius is just huge forwards for really, really cheap. And then going back to Luso, a nice... I mean, Gold Bears, it's really, really easy to be able to get yourself up to five different elements. I mean, you just got five elements off of three of the forwards. Earth Water with Sophie, Fire Ice with Caius. Wind with Luso, he's already at the 5, so when he does attack, he'll deal your opponent point damage. But regardless, obviously this is a nice way to be able to make Sophie um, huge as well. So for each Earth Forward, other than Sophie Control, Sophie gains plus 2,000 power. So off of Galoof, she'll gain plus 2k. Off of Galoof, she'll gain plus 2k. And then off of Maria, she'll gain plus 2k. So she is immediately a 10k forward. So you could just have Sophie on the field, pass turn, job's done. Um, and obviously now you've got two different means of being able to deal damage passively, or not passively, technically through Luso, but without an attack even though it is um <laughs> luso attacks you can deal opponent damage before the damage actually dealt through him dealing the damage you know what i mean um and then sophie got the end of turn effect as well now bear in mind that obviously sophie is an earth forward so it means it wouldn't be able to play the Aerith. so maria would be the only other way aside from gully also being on the field to be able to buff sophie but you know this is all talking about what Golbez is bringing in. we're not even considering the fact that Gloof is on the field that he might have brought something in as well so let's say hypothetically Gloof had entered and then played Aerith onto the field you then maybe broke a star sybil to play Golbez onto the field magic pot him or play delita or something like that um and then bring these guys onto the field and all of a sudden you've got a huge board and you pass turn draw a card deal opponent damage to your opponent unless of course they cast an Ixion. Right, yeah. Uh, subscribe, please. It makes a big difference to the channel. Uh, so does liking. I know not many people tend to like videos these days, but it actually does make a big difference to my visibility and people actually watching the videos that aren't necessarily subscribed. And it's something silly, like 80% of the people that watch these videos aren't subscribed. So if you aren't subscribed, subscribe. Uh, last well. So if you haven't seen my Galoof and the Knights deck tech talk, go watch that video because there are a lot of decent knights that are two cp forwards most of them are nice i mean laswell agrias charlotte uh Fissilis. then you've got stuff in fire like uh i've got his name bramza um and yeah it's just very easy to build a deck with a lot of two cost forwards that are all knights will all trigger laswell's entry effect and all gain buffs from galoof so you can have some huge forwards if you've got galoof on the field agrias on the field and then duke larg who is the ice buffer Agrias gains plus three from having an FFT forward. She gains plus one from Duke Larg, and then she'll gain plus two from Galoof. So she's plus six, and she's a 5k forward, I think. So it goes straight to 11k, just from being on the field. That's not too bad. Godot, <laughs> a card that everyone forgot about because it's not particularly great, but still, he does a similar sort of thing to Galoof. Uh, the forwards of cost two control, gain plus 2,000 power. Bear in mind it's the forwards of cost two, not cost two or less. So if you've got some weenie one CP forwards on the field, they won't gain the buff, unfortunately, which is kind of silly. It feels like a bit of an oversight, but <laughs> is what it is. Uh, so yeah, both Galoof and Godot are buffing those guys, and then when Godot attacks, choose one forward, it gains haste until the end of the turn not too bad um so soul is actually quite a fun way to play with this because you could galoof into soul pay a crystal to then play godot onto the field so you've paid four cp and a crystal to gain three 
reasonably sized forwards and Sol will be a 9k and the reason I like this little combo is because obviously Godot isn't going to be hanging about. Galoof probably won't be for long either but Godot your opponent probably doesn't want attacking on the following turn however if you've got enough crystals Sol isn't able to buff both Galoof and Godot very very easily. I mean he buffs the whole board right and this is the thing with these sorts of deck is that it's very easy for them to be dismantled as soon as you just kill one forward this forward's power bright uh, goes down they pop and then this other forward pops and yeah just follow it's like a chain reaction you kill galoof you kill maria you kill yareth and then everything just falls apart so having some sort of protection through soul by being able to buff your entire board for just a crystal ain't too shabby false hero so galoof might be an interesting one of or two of in a mannequin's deck because there's a lot of decent two cost mannequins now obviously you've got something like false hero which the job mannequin forwards other than false hero control game plus 2000 power um so you've already kind of got that covered anyway but galoof being up to them free play them onto the field as well ain't too shabby the backup line generally tends to have some earth in it with the shantoto mannequin i can't remember what it's called but yeah, just having even will buffs to your field, and when you're buffing stuff like Imaginary Solder, who obviously gets a buffs off of the mannequins already on the field, False Hero buffing him, and then maybe Galoof also buffing him as well, that's not too bad. And like I said, Galoof here, whilst the buff is nice, it's actually more about that kind of acceleration of being able to find these really decent two costs and play them onto the field. And it's not just Imaginary Soldier, you've got the um, Onion Knight, who's a really good entry. Uh, there's, oh, I've forgotten her name now, Terra. Um, Terra's doesn't have a decent entry but she has just a pretty good effect and i think it's something along the lines of if your opponent does something <laughs> paid to and then you get to cancel i can't remember exactly what it is but that's actually quite a nice effect so being able to protect her through galoof and false hero um ain't too shabby obviously this is all based on um damage based board wipes if your opponent plays shantoto run amaterasu otherwise but so when he enters the field, you get to name a job and an element, and you get that job and element. So make him a Dawn Warrior, because then he'll become plus 2k from his own effect, but then also plus 2k off of Galoof as well. Um, that's it, really. That's that's the combo. I guess you get to immediately make him into a 9k just off of Galoof. Um, and it might work well in a 5 base deck if you really want to do it. Yeah. Porum. Porum and Palum, both really, really good cards. No one needs to be told that, but the one problem with them is that how their killability they're very very easy to kill uh, now they might gain buffs quicker off of having both of them on the field so one thing that's good with galoof is that again like with the mannequins is acceleration so you've already got palom on the field galoof then straight into porum you've got them both there they're now both 6ks which means they're out of range of um Brynhilda and that sort of thing you know nice easy 5k pings um and then you pass turn they immediately jump up to 8ks with Galoof on the field so you know nice decent way to be able to just have two horrible forwards on the field that will gain their counters a lot quicker but actually have a form of protection through being bigger through Galoof. Mira so I mentioned earlier about weenie one costs but Galoof does play one cost onto the field as well as buffing them so you know being able to Galoof straight into Mira to then get a monster to your hand probably zombie um and then playing that onto the field get back a Mira and blah 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 you know that jam either way um yeah just more acceleration more finding the things you need to be able to do the things you want to do. Mog 13 2. So the card name Sari Control cannot be chosen by your opponent's summons abilities and then pay zero. Choose one category 13 forward. It gains plus 2,000 power until the end of the turn. You can only use the ability once per turn. Um, so in the 13 starter deck from Opus 19, there were actually a fair few two cost forwards, which are actually kind of a problem to deal with. Sarah, obviously, you've got Mog in the field, um, then becomes harder to kill. And also, Mog has that protection through being able to buff something by two as well. But Mog herself will be plus 2k which is not too shabby um and then you know she can buff herself as well she they can buff themselves by 2k as well so if your opponent again tries to brinhild or something like that they have to do a little bit more to actually get rid of mog but then sarah being able to you know um uh use her effects as well um and then you've got lightning really really useful card i mean really really useful card basically the reason that, that this card gets played this deck gets played oh my god my words um but obviously with the 13 deck you get to attack 
and buff all your stuff anyway, but that's on the attack. If you don't get to an attack phase, then you're kind of screwed. So having something like Aloof to buff your Lightning, your Sarah, your Mog, your Null, um, and having all these forwards, that's slightly bigger. Now, Billy, they're in Lightning and Ice, not in Earth. Yes, I know that, but if you're in Earth, you can also run Boonivels. And Boonivels is a 13 card that can attack twice, so it works nicely with Lightning. And also, you could throw in Amadar. Is it Amadar? I think it's Amadar. Uh, the Earth one, which can search you a Lightning or a Snow if you wanted. So, yeah, you've got options. Firion. Uh, so obviously playing Firion onto the field is perfectly nice, but actually if you've already got Firion on the field and then play Galoof into something else, that means you get two dolls off of Firion's effect. And Firion gains plus 5,000 power brave and can attack twice on the same turn with four more doll characters, but that only makes him an 8k, which means, you know, ultimately if your opponent does have a forward or just has some sort of summon, they can probably kill Firion. So making him a 10k with Galoof on the field is also quite nice. But yeah, like I said, also getting Galoof and other things onto the field very quickly and cheaply through Firion. Well, sorry, with Firion means that you get to dull more stuff out of the way. Seraphie. So, if you're running Galoof, chances are you're running a very two-cost heavy deck. And when um, when a four across two or less enters the field, place one gem counter on Seraphie. You get to then remove two counters and draw a card. So, you know, Galoof into something with Seraphie already, Seraphie already on the field, getting one counter. Or it could even be Seraphie into uh, Tama. You then Galoof into something else. You then remove a, uh, the two counters gained from both of those cards to then be able to draw a card and i think tama has something like protecting a forward if you put it into the break zone so maybe you can use that to protect your glue i can't remember the card stack so you might not be able to and finally fenrir because again if you're running lots of two costs why not run fenrir which is a free cast on any forward of two or less you control and make it so it cannot be targeted by your opponent's summons that's Galoof. I really like this card. Um, I mean, like I said, with Opus 21, we've got a lot of cards that like to just accelerate quickly. I mean, Warrior Light being the obvious one, but then Galoof is a lot of fun as well. And to be honest, you could probably make a deck with just lots of good two costs in multi-element Earth and run Galoof and Golbez and just have a whale of a time. You know, there are so many disgusting cards of two cost that do wonderful things um obviously you've got the fire wind zidane who removes cards from your opponent's hand now if you bring him in through gobas you don't get the entry effect but he's haste so you get it on the attack anyway so yeah not too bad um lots of two god two lots of good two cost cards Aerith and maria and all these other things you know there's plenty of ways to be able to buff all your two costs as well so you know you can have all these little weenie forwards that are actually really really big anyway let me know what kind of deck you guys are built with galoof because there's so much you can do with them um but thank you so much for watching guys stay safe be lucky subscribe and i'll see you in the next video